Hey guys, uh, in this session we're going to be looking at sort of solving quadratic inequations. Uh, this is part one of two, so just um, yeah, just bear with me as I go through these two questions on how to actually solve them. So with the first question, what you have is you've got a quadratic and it's actually less than zero. Now all this time you've actually had it a quadratic equation equal to zero. So the process behind finding it less than zero is pretty much exactly the same as what you did. So what you need to do is fi first find out what the x-intercepts are. So to find out what x-intercepts are, you actually need to put the quadratic equation equal to zero. All right, now this takes a little bit of time to understand, but once you get the hang of it, trust me, it'll all make sense. So we can factorize this uh, into two brackets, and we're going to get x plus 4 and x plus 3. So therefore, we know that x plus 4 equals to 0, or we can say that x plus 3 equals to 0, and so we've got x as negative 3 and x as negative 4. Now those are our two x-intercepts. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go back to the original question. The original question actually says, when is this quadratic less than 0? Now I'm looking at the coefficient of x squared. Coefficient of x squared is positive. Now because it's positive, I know that this graph is going to look like this because it's a positive parabola. And the symbol here that where it actually says less than zero, I'm looking for when is this parabola less than zero. Now if you think about it, this parabola, when you sketch it, it is going to look something like this where you're gonna have the parabola actually going through two points. Now how do I know it's actually going through two points? Well, the reason is because there's actually two x-intercepts there. Now those two points there are so you've basically got negative 3 there and negative 4 there. Because it has two intercepts, x-intercepts, it has to go through negative 4 and negative 3. And it's a positive parabola because of that coefficient of x squared being um, positive. Now, if you look at that part that I've actually highlighted in pink where it says less than 0, when is this parabola less than 0? Now, we know that the x-axis is where the y value is equal to 0. So if, I, if you think about it like this, this is the x-axis. But we know that the, um, the value of y along the x-axis is 0. So we're looking for when is this equation below the x-axis or below the y, um, when y value equals to 0. So the zone we're looking for is actually between negative 4 and negative 3. And so the way we write this final answer is we actually write down negative 4 first. And x is actually between negative 4 and negative 3. So this is how we write the answer down for question uh, A. Now question B, um, you know, I've actually put a different uh, question there, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change it back to this original question, just so you guys, you guys can get an idea of it. So if, let's say if it was 7, uh, x squared plus 7x plus 12 and it's greater than 0. So we're still going to do the same thing. We're still going to put it equal to 0. So x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals to 0 and then we factorize it so we've got x plus 4 times x plus 3 equals to 0. By the way guys I've used the same question so all the processes are still the same so we're still going to go to do x plus 4 equals to 0 or x plus 3 equals to 0 so therefore we've got our two x-intercepts which is negative 4 and negative 3. Now once again we look at the coefficient of x squared it is still positive and because it's a positive parabola it's going to look like this and we are going to get our x-axis here where the value of y is equal to 0. We've figured out what our two x-intercepts are, which is negative 4 and negative 3. Now, here's the kicker. At the moment, we're actually looking for when is this parabola bigger than 0. So you can kind of see that it's bigger than 0 when it is actually above the x-axis. Because remember, the values of y is positive above the x-axis and negative below the x-axis. Likewise, it's the same in the previous example. So what you can see here is you've actually got two zones here. All right. In the first question A, where we had the pink part that was highlighted, it was only one zone. It was between negative 4 and negative 3. But for question B, what you have is two zones. So the first thing we really need to say is that there could be two situations that could happen. So you, you could have it when x is less than negative 4 or when x is bigger than negative 3. 
All right, now I sometimes also write it like this. I mean, this is there's nothing wrong with it. So you can actually put down uh, like x is greater than negative three in the other way as well. So yeah, both of these um, way is fine. So yeah, so this so with quadratic inequations, your final answer is not going to be one where you go, oh, x is equal to this and x is equal to that. In fact, you're going to have an interval. Uh, either you'll have one interval, like the like the example I've given in the left hand side, or you're going to have two intervals, like the example I've given you on the right hand side. So we will look at a couple of more questions in uh, part two of this uh, video, but. Um, Yes, hopefully you guys got the hang of it. And if you have any questions, just drop it in the um, comment section below. All right, guys, uh, that's basically it for this uh, video here. As always, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to keep up with the latest content. There should be some playlists popping up. Check them out. Great revision material. And as always, thank you for watching.